You're going to find this interesting, both I am. of you. I know, because you're on your cell phone. You got your Blackberries. Uh, Dr. Devra Davis is joining us right now. And I want to make sure that I get your entire introduction, Doctor. You're from the Environmental Health Trust. You're the founder of that. Uh, your website is environmentalhealthtrust.org. You're an epidemiologist with the University of Pittsburgh, and you now run this health trust, and you also have written the leading book on cell phone radiation called Disconnect. And there's obviously a lot to say about it, and there isn't anyone really in our country now that doesn't have a cell phone, use a cell phone. Many of us are probably addicted to using our cell phone. You have a slightly different model phone. What does is, what is your phone say about your concern about radiation? Well, most people don't realize that a cell phone is a two-way microwave radio. Can you hold up the other part? This is sure. an iPhone, isn't it? Yes, this Just is like iPhone. everybody I know right. has. Right. Um, and and there's also, I also have a little warning label on the back of it. It's a picture of Einstein. You can get it say with his tongue sticking out saying can't call it a smartphone if it kills brain cells does it well as a matter of fact it changes brain cells we know that from a study published in the journal of the american medical association last week by dr nora volkoff the director of the national institute of drug abuse her work showed conclusively that exposure to a cell phone for just 50 minutes significantly alters the amount of glucose the brain's main fuel so the question is what does this mean over the long term we don't know, but we have good reasons for concern because what we do know is that cell phone radiation gets much more deeply into the heads of children than adults. So phones have never been evaluated for their impact on the developing brain. And studies that have been done in Europe show that people who use cell phones heavily for 10 years have a doubled risk of brain cancer. And in fact, those who start to use cell phones as teenagers have four to five times more brain cancer by the time they reach their 20s. Is the 20s. risk only when you're on the phone or if you carry it in your pocket next to a vital organ? Well, that's actually, Other than the brain. That's a very good question. In fact, phones are only tested in two positions, here with a spacer next to the brain and with a holster on the hip. So phones are never tested for how they are used by most people. Most men use them, of course, in their pockets. They're either their breast pocket or their pants pocket. That's where you'll get four times more exposure than you do in a holster or next to the brain because there's nothing protecting you with, from the microwave radiation. It's the long-term impact that we have to be concerned about here. Just as with Japan, the immediate impact on people who are downwind even uh, it's not going to be so great certainly not in that we're going to be able to see it in individuals at any time except for those poor workers who are trying now to quench the fires right. but the long-term impact is what we have to be concerned about and that's why we created environmental health trust we're working now with schools in wyoming pennsylvania uh, in california to promote awareness of safer cell phone policies i recognize we're not going to get rid of phones. I don't particularly want to. I love my phone just as much as anyone else, but I use it in a smarter way, which means I use it with this headset, and I certainly do not use it directly next to my brain anymore. So you use that handset or headset because it's insulated? It's insulated. Frankly, also, I can hear better with it, but any headset will help you because distance is your friend. The problem is you do not want to keep this device when it's on on your body. In fact, if you go to our website, Environmental Health Trust, and go to Disconnect Book, the book I wrote, you will see the warnings that have come with the Apple iPhone 4 or the Blackberry Torch. You click on cell phone safety, fine print warnings, and it says, do not keep next to the abdomen of teenagers or pregnant women. Okay, I have three phones. Mm -hmm. Work, I have two. personal, whatever. Right. A lot of people are carrying more than one. One so that Ellis can call at any hour of the night. Um, so, so the question is, do you triple your risk if you have three phones? Double your risk if you have two phones? Is my handbag insulating me? Yes. Your handbag is insulating you, and it's, it is the more the merrier, so to speak. And obviously, the question you have to ask yourself is, do you really need all three of them on all the time? Yes. I mean, so if, if you really do, then you just then I would say put them in your purse. Why don't they make um, some sort of contraption that could insulate the phone if you need to leave it on, especially for kids? Look, I never understood why a 10-year-old needed a cell phone. That's but a now point. I sort of do. I'm a parent. 
and you want to be able to reach your child, you want your child to be able to make an emergency call. Right. But if the exposure is greater to children, I think parents would change their mind. Well, that's why just last night I was at Pyle Middle School in Bethesda talking about precisely that. I think people have a right to know, as the San Francisco legislation indicates, that cell phones are two-way microwave radios and there are safer ways to use them. So we're working with city officials there to develop policies to make it safer to use cell phones. I Again, I recognize cell phones are lifesavers. I mean, look at what the role they've played in Japan in helping people to be rescued or the role in emergency response in medicine. But we want to be smarter about how we use them. And again, if you hold a phone here, it's thousands of times less exposure than here. Okay, because so it's the square of the distance. Yes. And speaker phones. Headsets, speaker phones. Don't use a phone when the signal is weak. Because when the signal is weak, the phone will get to the tower, but half of the radiation coming in, out of the phone gets into your brain, and it needs more, more radiation, more power to reach that tower. Think about this. Cell phones use microwaves for frequency, just like a microwave oven. An oven will boil water in two minutes with a thousand watts of power. A cell phone is much, much weaker, perhaps one watt or less, but people are using them for thousands of minutes, thousands more. of hours in their lifetimes, and we're starting to see a risk. That's why the leaders of the World Health Organization have recently published a warning saying that they believe it's time for prudent precaution. That's why the British government, the Finnish government, and the French government have all issued various warnings. And in Israel, actually, they're moving to discourage young children from using cell phones. Give us some practical news we can use. Folks that are chatting with us want to know how long is long-term, I assume, exposure. And I would like to know how you know if you have radiation sickness. A lot of people wonder about that with respect to Japan, with respect to if you're in California and also right. with people who use their phones every day. Well, let, let's make something very clear. A cell phone is non-ionizing radiation. It is not at all comparable to the ionizing radiation which is coming out of that plant now, which is coming out at a rate inside that is 400 times higher than what you would get in a single year, right, okay. in an hour. So there, we have a, an emergency in that situation. The world is well aware of it, and there are d debates now about how to deal with that. That is completely different from the non-ionizing exposure from a cell phone. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, having said that, again, distance is your friend. And by the time the material gets into the environment of Tokyo, it's hundreds and thousands of times less than what it was in the plant and hopefully will be dissipating and passing over. By the time it moves across the Pacific Ocean, it will be much, much less. There will not be a measurable, detectable impact of that radiation, if there is any, for years. But we know from a study just published from Chernobyl just this week that the long-term impact of living in an environment like that surrounding Chernobyl, again with heavy exposure to ionizing radiation, has been an increased rate of a number of types of cancer, including relatively uncommon cancers in children. Thyroid cancer normally doesn't affect children. In the Chernobyl survivors, it does. And there has been evidence of that, again, with the highest exposure. Most of us in this country, even the Pacific Islands that belong to the America, are not going to feel any, any risk at all. For cell phones, on the other hand, the risk is not immediate, and the good news is this. No matter how long you've been using your three cell phones and how often you've been holding them next to your brain, we are blessed with DNA that gets repaired all the time. Sunlight, oxygen, all of these things can damage our DNA. And the reason we live well is because we exercise, eat well, and do the right things that we know we can do. No matter how much damage may have occurred from your cell phone, DNA repair will help. And that's what we all have to count on. So just take your phones out of your pockets, particularly for men. A phone in your pants pocket for young men is associated with a reduction of sperm count and an increase of damage to sperm. In studies that have been done in four different countries by major leaders in the, that field of research, where they've taken samples of sperm from healthy men, split them in two, exposed them to cell phone radiation. And the samples exposed to cell phone radiation will die twice as fast and have three times more markers of damage on them. So that's why we're starting the campaign for safer cell phones. That's why I'm delighted to talk with you. It's great, Doc. And believe and me, the way you put it, everybody will pay attention and maybe take some more precaution. You've given us some comfort about the situation uh, for the people on the west coast of our country. At Dr. Deborah Davis, I would encourage everyone to go to environmentalhealthtrust.org to get more information and to read the book Disconnect.
Thanks for being with us. Thank you appreciate so much, Jenny. So I really appreciate your interest. Of course, there's the book. You can check it out.